It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Chapter 7. Hearts of Darkness. Even three months removed, I can feel that hand clamping down on my ankle. My good ankle, not the one I twisted in the garden the other day. An eater got a good hold of it and tried to pull me back into the bus where I could hear other refugees fighting against a mob of eaters pouring in from the front and back of the bus. I tried to pull myself up again, and the hand gripped even tighter. I can still feel cold glass embedded in its palm and the individual grains and shards lodged in the shredded skin of its fingers. They stabbed and slashed into my flesh, hot blood flowed from the gashes they made, and, probably most unnerving, it contrasted the absence of heat and the roughness of the dried skin as I tried to twist my leg out from between pulpy fingers. I didn't scream so much as gurgle and cough up more bloody drainage from my broken nose. The blood collecting between its fingers mixed with sweat and gave me room to twist and pull my foot around in the creature's grip. The glass dug deeper and ripped up my skin, but I kept pulling away, even as a second hand tried to grab onto my shoe. I felt slick, greasy hair brushing against my leg and pictured gnashing teeth closing in on my flesh. Between the pain, the terror, and the adrenaline, I found the strength to pull myself back up into the hatch and plant my free foot against the side of the hatch. The soldier behind me had his arms locked around my chest, but he didn't have the leverage against the pull of the eaters to get me out. I looked down into the darkness, and... I don't know if I reached out with the force or if it was dumb luck, but I dropped my free leg, kicked like a mule, and connected with something hard just at ankle level. I felt it snap, and the grip on my ankle was gone. Strong arms carried me backwards and out onto the roof of the bus. A soldier stepped up to the portal as bloated gray hands rose from the hatch. He pointed his weapon into the hole and sprayed it with an entire clip of ammunition. He waved the barrel in a circular motion inside the hatch, and a fine red mist rose up from inside, swirling into tight coils and plumes along with the smoke rising from his rifle. Spent casings shot out over the side of the bus, pelting the eaters below. The screaming in the bus died away pretty quick at that point. The only human sound I could make out inside the bus when the soldier was finished was the weak, fading cry of a child. My world went white for a moment. I didn't really pass out because I was aware, sort of, of things going on around me, but I fell into an odd parallel world where everything was in a peaceful state. Suddenly... Nothing was wrong. There were voices yelling to one another, presumably about me, but there was no urgency or fear in their tone. Every so often, a hot cartridge would bounce off the roof near me and over my body or face. In the numbness of my senses, it sounded like wind chimes, and the rifles firing together was like a riding mower running in the distance. The world was dark, but I remember experiencing bright sunshine warming my body. The bus rocked beneath me, and the air smelled of salt and sulfur. It smelled... It smelled like the ocean on the 4th of July, and I felt myself rolling with the ocean on some raft just offshore. I was brought back to reality by a burning shark biting down on my leg. I woke coughing up blood caught in my throat. The day faded to a smoky star field, spinning slowly counterclockwise. Another burning pain shot up from my ankle, and a hand clamped down on it again. Thinking the eater was back, I tried to yank my leg away, but this time, large, warm hands pressed back, 
twisting my ankle almost backwards and then back around. The stars blurred and winked out above me, and I found a smoking rifle barrel in front of my eyes, an inch from my forehead. I was about to freak out again when someone nearby shouted, She's clean! A long, terrible instant later, the thin, tall soldier pulled back his rifle. From the look on his face, he had been ready to kill me without reservation or hesitation and was perhaps a little disappointed to be denied the chance. He quickly stepped off over my head and toward the rear of the bus. My poor soldier, Sergeant Rock, was wrapping up my injured ankle. He looked to be fifty feet away, but he was right there with me. He didn't look up at me at all, but finished dressing the wounds, pulled the machine gun from over his shoulder, and went back to pouring ammunition into the herd outside the bus. The world was still turning counterclockwise. I couldn't breathe well. I coughed and heaved, gasping for as much as I could pull into my lungs before my body kicked it back out again. I could smell blood and fireworks and my stomach clenched. I turned on my left side and puked so hard I passed out again. In that moment I thought I was drowning. I thought I'd never wake up again. And I was too tired to fight it. Hey, Billy, why do you look so down? Aw, Dad, I got a computer, a PlayStation, and a barn full of iguanas, and I'm still bored. <sighs> Gee, Billy, when I was your age, I would read lots of stories in pulp magazines. Oh, with stories of weird adventure and fantasy, horror, satire, and lots of action. Wow, that sounds great, Dad. Yeah, I sure wish there was something like that right now. <laughs> <laughs> there is Daddy-O! Who are you? I'm Dr. Mary Von Roxbrocket, host of the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour, and now there's... Yeah? Twisted Pulp Magazine! <laughs> What's that, Doctor? Why, it is a return to greatness! Available on all your digital devices! That is what it is! Look! This looks awesome! Exciting and, dare I say it, very unwholesome. You definitely have that right, my good man! Ha ha! <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Mary! My pleasure, Billy! And just between you and me, I am not sure that this man is really your father. Bye! Dad? Uh, uh just read your Twisted Pulp magazine, Billy. Twisted Pulp magazine! Available in dark alleyways behind meth labs everywhere or at digitalvaudeville.com. That is D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E dot com. 